Maybe you've heard people encourage you or you've been someone who encouraged others and you said, just have faith. How about um, when you see uh, people who just seem to have a sense of peace in crazy times? It's like there's chaos going, at, going on and you see someone who just has like a sense of peace and, and, and that you ask them, what's, what's, what's the source of it? They say, well, it's because of their faith. Faith, you, you hear about it so much, and it's important. Hebrews 11 defines faith as this. It says that it's confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Confidence in what you hope for and assurance about what you do not see. Now, ultimately, what we hope for and what we're confident about is Jesus that he's alive, that he's moving in our world, like we were just singing about, that God is good in every way, that God has the power and the ability to change things in your life and in the lives of others. We hope in that. We put our trust in that. We're confident in that. If you know that you've been made right with God and that his mercy, his grace, his wisdom, his power, his love, his strength, God's provision, his, his goodness, his spirit. If you know that all of that is now accessible to you, thanks to Jesus, then when you believe it and you stand on that truth, it affects your life. It affects what you do. It affects how you think. It affects how you live your life. You can walk with a confidence in what we hope for, and you can live your life with an assurance about what you don't see, or at least what you don't see yet, when you believe those things to be true about God, and you stand on the truth of Jesus. It results in trust in God and living a life that's full of faith. God, I just pray this morning that you would speak to our hearts, Jesus. I pray, God, that you would use this message, God, to speak whatever it is that you, you want to speak, Lord. Not my words, but your words, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would touch down in this place, God, that you would draw our hearts closer to you this morning, God. I pray that you would break through every boundary, every barrier, God, within us that keeps us from seeing your face, that keeps us from being closer to you, God. Would you break through those things this morning, God? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Faith is important, and I just want to give you a few reasons, some things to think about why faith is so important. Uh, faith is important because you will think, speak, and act according to your faith, or you will speak, and you will act, and you will think according to your lack of faith. Now, faith, it leads to hope and optimism and, and, and peace in your life because when you walk in faith, what do you do? You hold to God's promises. You're speaking God's promises. Again, you're holding to them. But lack of faith, well, it leads to hopelessness and pessimism and worry. And when you walk in lack of faith, what does it lead to? It leads to fear, a lot of fear in your life. You walk full of fear rather than full of faith. Faith is important because it causes you to act on what you haven't seen or experienced yet. Believing God's best and his promises, trusting him even when your situation hasn't changed yet, causes you to act on what you haven't experienced yet. I haven't seen this thing, but I know what God's word says. I'm holding to it. Trusting him, even though it hasn't changed yet. Faith, you know what it does is that faith can keep you from making some rash decisions. You know, we, we, we experience issues, problems come up. Every, no one's immune from troubles and things that we face. But faith, it can keep you from making some, some quick decisions that you make in fear and worry that actually lead to more problems in your life. They create issues. You made some decisions that you shouldn't have made. You made them because you were fearful rather than being full of faith. Faith will keep you from making those decisions. Faith is important because it gives you peace. When you don't know how 
things are going to happen, you know, when things are going to happen, when you don't know, you know, what to do or where to go, you don't know all those things, the different situations that, that all of that can be um, applicable to. You, when, you, when faith is important, because when you find yourself asking those questions, how, what, when, why, where, faith gives you peace, trusting that God in his perfect timing can and will do good. God is good. I believe that faith is also important because I believe that faith opens the door to God's blessing and power in your life. Lack of faith will keep you from walking in those things. You, you can see it all over the Gospels, all over the Bible. Faith is so important. Man, when people walk in faith, it just opens the door to God's blessing and his power because God responds to faith. He's looking for people who will walk in faith. But he's so good. Romans 8.28 says this. It says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. I love this scripture because I just think that this, this passage is like a faith booster. I mean, this, this, when, I, when I read this scripture, I just feel like, man, I, faith stirred up in me. Uh, I feel a new confidence to just trust God. Uh, let me just read it one more time. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. This is a faith booster because it tells us that we can trust that God is up to good things. Do you believe that this morning? Do you really, I mean, you can believe it this morning, but how about when the week gets going? On a day-to-day -day basis, do you believe that God is up to good things in your life? Well, this scripture just, it tells us, even in the midst of bad things that we face, and in God, his right time, he will cause everything to work together for good for those who, are love, who love God and are called according to his purpose. It means that the hardship and the troubles, the, the curveball that life can throw at you, even when we face those things, that you can have faith and find strength and peace and not lose your mind, but have hope and optimism because you serve a God who is up to good things. He's up to good things. Look at Jesus' words in John 16. 33, Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, Jesus says, for he has overcome the world. Jesus says, take heart. Can you just imagine being before Jesus and he says that to you? Hey, take heart. What is he saying? He's saying, hey, have courage. Have hope. Put your faith in me, he says. Because he's overcome the world. It means he has the power to do all things. He's in control. Faith, it's just so important. There's just so many aspects to walking in faith. And there's so many things about faith that are just so vital to the Christian life. If you're going to be a follower of Jesus, faith is so important because it, it's the means by which we have relationship with God. Faith. It's the means by which you have relationship with God. You know, what is Jesus? He calls us to live a surrendered life to him. Jesus calls those who would follow him to live surrendered, dependent on him, and to believe and trust in him. Without faith, you can't do any of those things. Without faith, you cannot live surrendered to him. You can't live dependent on him. You can't just walk and just continue to trust God and believe him without faith. None of those things can truly take place in a person's life. Without faith, your relationship with God is stifled. Without faith, it's like your relationship with God starts to get knotted up. It starts, it's restrained. It's like it gets blocked up or stopped up. Without faith, it becomes lifeless and even dead. James 2 actually says this. It says that faith without works is dead. In other words, how we live reveals what we believe. 
and whether the faith we profess to have is a living faith or a dead faith. How you live reveals what you believe. And whether the faith that you profess is a, a living faith or, or is it a dead faith. Here's the good news. We can grow in our faith. Your faith can grow. Um, as you continue to seek God and you look to God, you keep coming to God. As you continue to get more of the things of God in your life, your faith will grow. It's not just that your knowledge of God grows. That's a good thing. But as you get more of the things of God in you, what happens is the spiritual man grows. Your spirit is strengthened by the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Your spirit is strengthened by his word. Just like you would add physical muscle, you know, if you started like a weightlifting uh, regimen, um, you start to add muscle, you start to grow, you start to be strengthened. Do you know that you grow spiritually in all kinds of ways by getting the things of God in you, by looking to God, by calling on him? One way that we grow is in our faith, having a strong and sincere trust in God. That can grow. In 2 Thessalonians, the apostle Paul, he, he's like just thrilled about how the early believers are growing in their faith. Here's what he says, 2 Thessalonians 1.3. He says, we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of everyone of you for one another is increasing. When I look at passages like this, it's hopeful and encouraging to me that our faith can grow. You can grow in your, your faith. Do you know that the disciples even once uh, they, they were before Jesus and, and they prayed and asked Jesus that he would increase their faith. You know, when we think about having faith and the importance of it, I think it can be discouraging if you're like, man, you know, I look at my life and I just feel like I just lack faith in so many areas. Uh, when I look at my life and you, you're talking about the importance of faith, I feel like I just fall so short. It can be discouraging if you feel like you have none. Now, if you know that you've been lacking faith in a certain area of your life, you need to have a conversation with God about that. And, and what you do is you come to him and you ask him for forgiveness. God, I'm so sorry that I have, I just, I'm not able to trust you in this thing that I have doubts. Lord, help me. Help my doubt, God. Help my unbelief. You can ask God those things. You even see a, a, a story in the the Gospels about someone who said that to Jesus. Help my unbelief. But it can be discouraging if you feel like you're always on the losing end of having any kind of faith. If you feel like you never exercise your faith, it can be discouraging. But the reality is, is that might not be the case. In fact, you might live your life in many ways where you're actually demonstrating your faith and expressing it. It's encouraging to me to know that some of the simplest actions or heart attitudes in the life of a Christian can actually be significant acts of faith in God. And this is just what I've been really interested in lately, just personally, in ways that we actually do walk out trust and faith in God that maybe go unrealized in our lives. Maybe there's, there's things that go unnoticed but I've actually been walking in faith in God. I just, I just wasn't aware of that. I was demonstrating faith. I'm really interested in those kinds of things. They can be small acts, can be significant acts of walking by faith. For example, and this is kind of the main one that I wanted to talk about this morning, is I believe that faith in a person's life, it looks like resilience in a believer's life, specifically in a believer's life. That as you walk out faith in God, as a follower of Jesus Christ, that what it looks like is resilience in your life. One simple way, you may be walking out faith in God, but maybe you're not fully, you know, you don't fully realize it, is that when things get tough, when you're hard pressed, when you're going through it, 
when, like when trouble comes, negative circumstances, it's like somehow you just keep finding this way to get through it. You, you keep praying, you keep looking to God, and then after it, even if it didn't end well, this thing that you, you've been going through, or even if the circumstance hasn't changed yet, it didn't get all that much better, somehow you're better. Maybe the situation hasn't changed, uh, but still, as you continue moving forward, you haven't lost faith in God. Uh, you haven't stopped believing in God. You're continuing to look to him. You keep holding to God. You, you keep choosing to just trust in him and to serve him. And this trial or hardship, which could have or should have taken you out, it just hasn't. You just keep getting up. What is that? You keep going after God. You keep finding some kind of new strength to move forward, in part because of the Holy Spirit, but also in part because of faith. I believe faith looks like resilience in the life of a Christian. Being resilient, it means being able to withstand and recover from difficult conditions. Resilient. And your story of resilience is a story of faith. You could say it the other way around. Your story of faith will be a story of resilience in the life of following Jesus. And really, all that, it's a story of God's faithfulness. But I just love this, this idea that your story of resilience it's a legacy story. We're talking about the, over the course of your life. When you look back over the course of your life, there is a legacy story, potentially, for those who, certainly for those who walk by faith. It's a legacy story to your family, to your friends, to your loved ones, to your children. And really more than it being your story, it's God's story. But when people look back on your life, when your children look back on your life, what a testimony for them to see how even when life was hard, somehow you just kept rising. I mean, you kept finding new strength. And people look at that and they say, what is that? You weren't just sort of dragged on by life. Life didn't just drag you on. No, but you kept receiving and finding new hope. You kept moving forward because as you stood on God's word and trusted in him, the spirit of God and the power of God, it, 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 it engraced you. It caused you to be resilient. You kept serving God and honoring him. What a testimony, I think. That's a legacy kind of story. When troubles came and hard seasons came, you stayed full of faith in God. And I just think that's, well, think about Job's life. That's one of the most powerful things about Job's life. It's like no matter how hard things got, no matter how much loss Job faced, what did he do? He kept holding to his faith in God. And, and Job, he said, I will just continue to bless God. I don't care about the things that are happening to me right now. Job says, I will bless his name. I will not curse God. And he just continued to worship God. Man, what a story of faith. Many of you guys in this room, you guys have some incredible things that you faced. There are people in this room who have gone through some hard seasons. Some people in this room are still in a hard season. Now, everyone has faced hardship in this room. No, everyone, we all have stories of facing hardship and going through it. And I, just a side note, I think that's what makes the church so beautiful. You think here on a Sunday morning how beautiful it is that people who have faced hardship and trial, that they would come together, that they would unite in this one thing, to worship God and to profess their faith in him. Even though, I mean, there's, there's some stories in this room, things you wouldn't believe that people have gone through. But others in this room have gone through hard seasons. And after years now, many of you, some of you guys are on the other side of it. You're on the other side. And you have seen how God's spirit and power and grace enabled you to rise above, to be resilient. 
But somewhere in all of that, faith played a part. Faith in God, it played a part. Think about this. Many people face hardship and they never recover. We probably know people, each of us probably know someone who's faced hardship and trouble and it's like, man, it just took them out. But you keep going after God and finding strength in part because of his spirit, but also in part because of faith. I believe, again, faith, it just looks like resilience in the life of a Christian. Specifically in the life of a Christian. Because many people, they get derailed. Many people crash. They give up. They turn to things that, are, that destroy their lives. Many people, they give up on God. They lose hope. They spiral. They never recover. And that's sad. It's tragic. They can. Jesus has the power to change things. But they never recover. And you know what? Jesus, he actually gives us the key to living out of faith that results in resilience. If you want resilient kind of faith, Jesus, he talks about it. He says that people who build their life on the rock, that is God, who build their life on the rock, who build their life on his words and hold to them, are the people who have that resilient kind of faith. Here's what he says, Matthew chapter 7. Jesus says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat on that house, but it did not fail, it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. Your faith is built and founded on Jesus, the rock. It has to be or else the house falls. Hearing his words, standing on his words, but then actually doing what his words tells us. Faith in God is what allows us to experience stability in the middle of instability. Man, when life feels out of control, we take comfort in knowing that who's in control? God's in control. When trial after trial just seems to come your way, but you're just, you just determined, I'm going to trust God. You're not blaming God. You don't turn from God. You're not angry with God. When those kinds of temptations come your way to be angry with God or to blame him, man, you just shut those things down. Say, no, I'm not going there. I'm not thinking those things. No, the enemy will come and he'll, he'll try to get you to, to, to fall into those temptations. Blame God. Turn from God. Be angry for, with God. You shut those things down. You say, nope. I will choose to bless his name. I'm just going to choose to keep blessing God. I'm going to keep choosing to trust God, knowing that he sees me. God sees everything. It's not like he doesn't see the things that are going on in your life. God sees them. Faith in God, it allows you to experience stability. You know what it also does? When, when you just choose to bless God, you just keep worshiping him. You put him first in your life. You put him first above things. You prioritize God. What it does is it invites the spirit of God to move in your life and in your heart powerfully. It invites the Holy Spirit. And that's why I just believe your story of resilience, it's going to be a powerful legacy story of faith. It gives hope and encouragement to others. It gives, it's going to give glory to God. And, you know, when I think about that legacy story of faith and resilience, one person I think of is my, one of my grandmothers, actually both of them. But I had this grandmother who's since passed many years ago now. And, and though no person is perfect, right, there's no perfect person. She, 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 she was here today. She would admit I I'm not, was not a perfect person. Many of the stories that I do know firsthand about her and some of the stories that I've heard other family members tell about her life, man, these are just some powerful faith stories. The stories about her life have set like an example, a standard to many people about having a resilient kind of faith. Let me tell you about her. This was a woman with seven kids. And 
while the kids were still young, the father left them without any support. And you had, there was this single mother who just fought to provide for her kids however she could. Um, this family was the family that poor people called poor. It was sad, but man, these guys were, I mean, they just scrapped through it. Um, but even in her lack, many of the stories you hear, even in their lack, in her hardship, in some of her own shortcomings, she never turned from God. She never gave up on God. She always believed that God could or would help her. And she always believed that somehow God would come through. I hear stories about this family praying together that God would send someone to provide food or, or financial support. And they would just pray and they would pray. Um, I, I've heard stories about how as they, as they did that, raising seven kids in a tiny three-bedroom home, for years she even worked jobs at, at a factory, working late to provide for her kids. But throughout through those years, there were many stories I've heard of, of just God's faithfulness in her life. Somehow God sending somebody, somehow God intervening in her life, giving support to her. You know, my wife actually has a, a similar story to this as well. Growing up on the mission field, just seeing God, praying. But that, that, I'll let her tell that story some other time. But, but for my grandmother, what I've heard is that as the years went by, her kids grew up. Some things became easier. Some didn't. But as she got older, her faith, it didn't waver. You know what happened? Her faith only grew it was amazing. As I became a young adult, when I would think about going over to my grandmother's house, what immediately comes to my mind when I think about her is prayer warrior, truly. You ever never known someone who is just like, man, this person is serious about prayer. I could remember going to her, her house, tiny little um, duplex that she lived in, half side of a duplex. But her living room, it was like a Christian bookstore. I kind of laugh to myself when I think about it. I mean, just every book you could ever see, Bibles all over. Uh, you would walk in and she would have, you know, one of the, the Christian TV stations on. Always, always. This lady was serious about prayer and about God. You think about a history with God of just walking out faith in Him. And then in her latter years... You just find and you see this resilient person who is more passionate and more in love with Jesus than ever before. She was a believer. She loved Jesus. She trusted in the cross for her salvation. And one day, she went home to be with the Lord. And on the day of her passing, I was asked to, to come and, and do worship by her bedside to sing some worship songs. And you know, I'll never forget that there was a sweet presence, even as she's passing, getting ready to go home to be with the Lord. Uh, there was a real peace of the Holy Spirit in that place. Now, this is kind of crazy. I've only shared this with a few people over the years, but a few years back, I was considering not being a part of worship here on, on Sunday mornings. Uh, I was thinking, you know what, I, that's probably something that I need to lay down, and I'm just going to focus on putting messages together. I'm going to focus on that. And so I was thinking that a couple years ago, and um, I hadn't actually voiced that to anyone. Didn't even, my wife didn't even know that I was thinking. I mean, you just, it's that one of those things. You're just contemplating. You're thinking about it. A couple weeks go by. I'm just thinking about that to myself. Well, one night... In those two weeks, I had this dream, and in the dream, it was her. It was my grandmother, and she came right up to me, and she was standing right in front of me, like looking me face to face. I could still see her in my mind from this dream that I had, and she told me, hey, you are not to stop being a part of worship on Sundays at the church, and 
and there was more to the dream. But when I woke up, I thought, how is that possible? I haven't even told anybody that. And my goal here in this place is my desire is to push other people to be a part of worship. Man, I want to see many individuals be a, become a part of worship. I want to get other people involved who are gifted and called to, to lead worship. I have a dream of seeing other worship leaders, you know, be, be raised up. I love all that. I still desire to take breaks from being a part of worship and being involved. But I also know that until the Lord indicates otherwise, well, I'm, I'm just not entirely going to be done with being a part of worship. Now, I've never questioned whether my grandmother was in heaven. Man, I know she loved Jesus. But after that dream, man, I know that she's alive with the Lord. I, I, I'll just never forget that dream. Yeah, it was like two or three years ago. But why did her words carry so much, even from just a dream? Well, it's because she was a woman who just walked out resilient kind of faith in God. No matter what happened, she just kept going after God. And I think, man, what a legacy story of faith. I can't get into all the things that she went through in her life that she experienced. But I think what an example set for those who knew her to follow. And how good of God to walk with her through all those years. To sustain her, to embrace her, to comfort her, to uphold her, to meet with her all the way through. Faith looks like resilience in the life of a believer. How about the Apostle Paul, his resilient kind of faith? Walking by faith in Jesus, trusting him, serving him. Paul, what did it do? It got him in a lot of trouble. Got him into a lot of trouble. It's like the more that Paul had faith in God, the more that he served God, the more that he, all he wanted to do was love Jesus and tell other people about Jesus. But what happened? It's like the more that he did that, the more trouble it brought. Paul was beaten. He was spit on. He was mocked. People attempted to murder him multiple times, left him for dead. The skeptics or the people on the fence would say, man, Paul, why? Is it worth it, Paul? Why do you keep going, Paul? Paul helped to establish many of the first churches. But even then, in many of those early churches, there was just so much trouble and opposition. There was crazy things happening. Nevertheless, Paul continued. He persevered. It was like no matter what came, no matter what the devil threw at him, he was just going to keep going after God. And in doing so, he walked out faith in God. I love this. This is a scary thought, I think, for the enemy when he sees someone who just keeps praying. When, when, when they're going through it, they're going through a hard season, I think it's a scary thing for the enemy to see a person who keeps serving God. They just keep worshiping God. They keep blessing God's name because that's a person that the enemy knows God's going to use. He's going to move in their life. But what kept Paul going ultimately it was the Holy Spirit, Christ alive in him, giving him strength. Look at Paul's words in 2 Corinthians. He says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. What he means is that we're simply earthen vessels. We have these bodies. He, he calls them, compares them to jars of clay. The treasure is God's gift inside. What is that gift? That's the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God living in you upon placing your faith in Jesus. Because that's what happens when you place your faith in Jesus. You surrender your life to him. The Spirit of God comes to live within you. So now he says we have this treasure now in jars of clay to show that this power is of God. It's not of us. Then look at verse 16. He says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So what do we do? 
Here's what he says. Look again. He says, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. It's like, Paul, why have you kept going on? All the things that you face, the hardship, the trouble. Why have you kept following Jesus? Faith. Paul knew what it was to experience hardship. And yet he also knew what it was to find this renewal, this inward renewal that only comes by God's Spirit. So because of Christ alive in us, he says, here's what we do now. We fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but but on what is unseen. In other words, we have faith. This is the last point for this morning. And Jose and Devin, if you guys are in here, you can make your way up. Brilliant faith. It trusts in the blood of Jesus to cleanse you. If it's one thing to go through a season of hardship where, where you have to trust God's hand to guide and lead your life. And as you do, you, you keep finding strength. The, the, the Spirit keeps strengthening you. It gives you a newness in, of life to move forward. But a resilient kind of faith, it doesn't end there. It also looks like trusting in the cross and his blood to cleanse you, to atone for your sin, and to wash you anew. Do you know that the power of the cross, the power of the sacrifice of Jesus, it stands to account for your sins, past, present, and future? Did you know that? Through repentance and truly putting your faith in Jesus, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, the power of the cross, it stands to to account for your sins, past, present, and future. Did you know that? It's, 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 It's incredible. This is why Ephesians chapter 1 says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. And so as a Christian, when you've given your life to Jesus, when you put your faith in him, your position in Christ, thanks to the cross, is a position of being chosen, holy, and blameless in his sight. Because you got the cross of Jesus over your life. Your position in Christ is that you have access now to the riches of God's grace. But as we walk out relationship with God and we walk out faith in him, God leads us into this maturing process, this refining process of sanctification. Sanctification. And what happens is, as believers and followers of Jesus, if we do fall short, If we do make mistakes, we have access to the riches of God's grace now because of Jesus. We can approach God again and again and again, and you can find mercy. You can find grace. You can find the love of God again. Why? Thanks to Jesus who was perfect in every way and was slain in your place. So though you might fall short, you might make mistakes, Though a man may fall seven times, you get back up. You keep coming to God. You keep confessing your sin to him. You ask God to cleanse you, to forgive you, to wash you. First John says that as you do that, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now the faith part comes in believing that. Believing his word. Acting on it. You're continuing to get back up. You're following God. You're, you continue to serve him. Even, even if you've blown it, you, you've come to him in repentance. You're trusting that the cross is enough to atone for your sin. But sometimes we make mistakes. We fall short. And we feel like, man, it's, it's over. God's, he's done with me. I blew it again. Maybe I'll just stay distant from God for a little bit. Or we think, I've exhausted God's mercy. I've exhausted his grace. The enemy will get you to think those things. We might think, man, this is, surely this is like the last time God's going to forgive me for this. He might have forgiven me the last time. 
but his grace, it's, it's running out. We think those things. The enemy will get you to think those things. His grace is not running out. To say that it is, is to say that the cross is not enough. Now, of course, God doesn't want us to stay stuck. God doesn't want us to, to, to be in like a kind of bondage. And no one is perfect, but it takes faith as well as humility to trust God, to keep coming to God and keep letting God do his work in you. It takes faith to sincerely confess your sins and repent. And when you confess your sins and, and you ask God, Lord, oh, forgive me, cleanse me, wash me, it takes faith to walk away from that and know that you can be forgiven. It takes faith to believe that when you ask for his mercy and forgiveness, he's not keeping a record of your wrongs. And in faith, you believe that he remembers no more. Why do you believe those things? Because that's what his word says. It's the last scripture for this morning. Jeremiah the prophet, he saw and prophesied about a time when there would be a new covenant with God's people. That God, Jeremiah saw God was going to do something new, just something just radical through Jesus. And it would, what it would look like, what it would mean for those who believed and put their faith in Jesus. Here's what it says, Jeremiah 31, 31. It says, no longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. That's the new covenant of, of your life in Christ, faith in Jesus. And Jesus, this morning, we're just so thankful for what the cross does, the, this relationship that you've brought us into. We thank you this morning, God, that there's mercy to be found as we approach the throne of grace that we can continue to find strength and grace, yes, forgiveness, your love. God, we also thank you that we have access to the Holy Spirit who can embrace us and strengthen us. We thank you, Lord, that you desire to move powerfully in our lives to free us, God, to take us to new places of freedom with you. And I pray, Lord, that for each of us, God, every individual in this place this morning, that you would stir up that faith, God, in our hearts, Lord Jesus that you would bring to remembrance your word, God, even after we leave this place, that we would walk with boldness, God, and courage, a daring kind of faith, Lord, as we trust you and look to you. In Jesus' name. This is the last Sunday uh, of the month. We always want to take a time to, to remember his sacrifice on the cross. So I'm going to just pray over our communion if you've given your life to Jesus, this is for you. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, what are you waiting for? Have a conversation with him. You, you make him your Lord. You, you repent of your sin. Ask him to wash you and cleanse you. Trust in the cross. But Lord Jesus, I just pray that you would touch this communion elements with your presence. Lord, we remember your body that was broken for us. We remember your blood poured out for the forgiveness of sin. We remember the crown of thorns that you wore on your head. We remember you stretched upon that cross. The nails pierced through your hands and your feet in our place. The Lamb of God slain for the sins of the world. Jesus, we, we put our, our sin on you, God. And thank you, Jesus, that you crucify it. You crucified it to that cross. Thank you for your sacrifice this morning, Jesus. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name.